It's Teresa from Dodge Nature Center. And this week on Nature To Go, we're talking skulls. Now, we're not talking Halloween skulls. We're not even talking skulls like you see in the celebration of Dia de los Muertos. We're talking animal skulls. So imagine you're out for a walk. You're wandering through the woods and slightly off the trail, you notice something whitish. It's not leaves. And then you realize, wow, I'm looking at a skull. Now, your first instinct is to try to figure out, well, what animal's skull is this? And sometimes it is easy to know, oh, that is a deer skull or whatever the skull may be. But there's a lot of times where you just aren't sure what animal this skull belongs to. But by looking at some key features on the skull, you can learn a lot about how the animal lived its life and from that, you may be able to make a more informed guess about what kind of animal it is. So what are those features you're gonna look for? So a lot of times when you find a skull, you probably notice the teeth first. That's the thing that you're, you're thinking about that you're noticing. You've got the front teeth here, your incisors, just like we've got front teeth. You've got the canines, the fangs that are on either side of those incisors. And then along the cheek, you have molars. And depending on the shape of the, the, especially the molars, that tells you a lot about what the animal eats. For some animals, okay, when I look at those molars, they're very flat. This animal is one that is processing lots of plant material, doing a lot of chewing. And I also notice there's no canines at all. It's just nice and smooth here, so there are incisors, but there's no canines, very flat back teeth. This animal is definitely an herbivore. All right, and then look at a skull like this one. All right, we've got incisors, we've got canines. So when I look here and I see these flattish molars, it tells me that this animal does a lot more eating of plants than some other kinds of animals. This is an omnivore. Then I can have an animal like this one, where those molars back here, yeah, super pointy, super, super pointy. This is a carnivore, because all it's doing is it's grabbing after meat. It's not worried about plants. So we've got carnivores. All right, so I've looked at the teeth. That gives me a pretty good idea of what foods the animal is eating. Now I wanna think about, well, how does it find the food that it needs, especially if it's an omnivore or a carnivore? And one of the things that I can pay attention to is the length of the nose. This animal has a really, really long nose. So it probably is using smell. But on a skull like this one, do you see how very, very short nose probably is not relying on smell as it goes out and hunts. Then I can also think about the eyes on these animals. Now, these big openings here, the whole thing isn't the eye. It's just this front part, that's the eye. And when I notice the positioning of them, it looks as if the animal is looking straight ahead. It looks like the animal is looking straight ahead. These are animals that are hunters. They're looking for prey, and so having their eyes facing forward gives them binocular vision. They're able to focus both eyes, and it helps them determine distance as they're chasing down an animal. On the other hand, if you have an animal like this one, well, look at those eyes. They're very much here on the sides. An animal like this looks out this direction and can even look towards the back a little bit more. It's being chased, it's the prey. And so if its eyes were facing forward, it would have to keep turning around looking over its shoulder to see what was coming for it. But instead by having the eyes facing outward this way, it lets them see what's coming from behind. So there's an old saying, it says, eyes in front likes to hunt eyes on the side likes to hide. That's one way that you can look at eye position and know something about this animal's life. 
One last thing that I can use skulls for in figuring out something about the animal, even if I haven't been able to name what the animal is yet, is I can get an estimation of the overall body size. When I look at a skull, this length is about one-fifth of the overall body length, not counting tails. It's gonna be about five times longer than this one. That would make this animal around 35 inches long. And when you look up the information about this animal, it says the average length of this animal is between 32 and 40 inches. The skull is seven inches, that would make it 35. Yeah, the math works out. It's about one fifth, okay? It's a bigger skull, so you probably went, well, it's a bigger animal, but it gives you a sense of just how big that animal is. So if you're lucky enough to find a skull when you're out on a hike, Use some of the clues we talked about today to help you figure out how this animal lived its life. And even if you never identify exactly what animal it is, at least you know a little bit more about how it got its food, how big it was. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Nature to Go, and we'll talk to you again next time.